What's up guys, it's Jacob here with Side by Side Life and the car is finally done. But before this video starts, I want to give you kind of a rundown of exactly what I did in the last like three months. So, first, I got a CT Raceworks gusset kit. Second, I got CT Raceworks bushings. Third, I got new CT Raceworks boxed lower A-arms. Uh, fourth, I upgraded my Halo locker for a billet Halo 30. And I also got RCV 33 spline axles. So stay tuned guys, I hope you like the build. What's up YouTube? So if you watched till the end of my last video, you know that I recently got a Halo 30 in the mail. It's a full billet differential case um, with their forged crowd treated gears. So this thing's awesome. Super excited about this. It's uh, not the old school one with four pins. It's the new one with six pins. So when it's locked, it's locked. Um, and the reason this thing's heavy. The reason I've been uh, taking so long um, kind of in between videos is because during this whole COVID thing, uh, it's kind of hard to get parts. So if you know anything about the Halo 30, you know that you either have to put in Turner 2.0 axles or RCV axles. And I ordered my RCV axles, oh, probably like a month ago. And uh, I just got one in the mail yesterday and I got the other one in the mail today along with uh, like a sweatshirt and a shirt and a hat and some stuff. Um, so I'm super stoked. I have the differential and the axles. So I'm gonna install those today. Um, the car is not gonna be fully done because there are some more items that are still in the mail um, before I can get the front end all buttoned up. I quickly came to the conclusion that with the gusset kit installed, you could not put the new differential in. <laughs> so I quickly took the, the uh, the back side of the gusset kit off just so we can get the differential in. So let's slide this guy in now. And this one's quite a bit bigger than the uh, the old case. So I think we can slide it in just like that and then we can turn it into place once we get it in here. I think, we'll see. Like I said, it's substantially larger. There we go, We're getting it. All right, there she sits. All right guys, so I got the differential installed and you'll notice that the gusset kit right here, uh, I, got it, I got it reinstalled. I had to take it out because there just wasn't enough clearance. You can see how close it was. Um, there just was not enough clearance to get this guy in there. And it's super close to the front too. I don't know if you guys can kind of get see that, but it's really close. I mean, it's quite a bit bigger than uh, than the old differential, but boy, does it look sweet. Here's the other side. Um, if you don't know, this port right here is the vent valve. And then this is where the actual uh, locking mechanism goes. Uh, it's just a little, plastic um, electronic lock that has a pin that pushes in here and that's what engages your six pins so that uh, the differential is fully locked. But looks good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, upper A-arms installed. So stay tuned. Day two of the upper A-arms and hopefully the axles. Um, like I said, some stuff's in the mail. You can probably already guess what it is because I keep saying the upper A-arms. I'm going to install those. I got lower A-arms. Super excited about it, but they're taking forever. Um, so, yeah, I'm just trying to get as much stuff as I can done, you know, so I don't have a lot of stuff at the very end. Um, I already installed the driver's side upper A-arm, um, and I'm going to kind of show you guys how to do the passenger side. All right, so... Got the bushings in, got the protectors on. I'm just gonna slide it up in between my front front of the gusset, the CT Racer's gusset, and the back, and uh, slide the bolts in. You kinda just gotta bend, you kinda gotta push your A-arm up in there 
ever so slightly and it'll all hold together real easy. So that's all there is to it right there. There's one bolt. Let me get the other bolt and uh, we'll slide the front bolt in. So I'm just holding my front end up with my shoulder and uh, this other side was kind of a pain. You kind of just gotta finagle it into place. And once you do, you slide the bolt all the way through and you got it on. All right guys, so after about 20 minutes of getting frustrated, I think I figured it out. I got the other side installed and all the way in. And uh, what I did is I, I stuck it in, I slid it as far as it would go. Then I just took a mallet, gave it a couple good taps, and you can, uh, you can well, actually feel it slide all the way up to the differential. So that's how you get the axles in to the halo diff. Um, they're just really, really tight tolerances, which is awesome. Um, makes it kind of a pain to get in, but uh, super cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and untie this guy and uh, get this down into position. I'll slide this through. Watch your fingers when you do that. All right. Next, I'm going to slide on the caliper here. All right, there we go. Look at there, piece of cake. Next is our castle nut and our washer. Just going to clean off the washer a little bit. Slide this on. And I am not going to throw the cotter key in yet um, because I'm going to wait until I get everything tight, everything ready to go, get the lower A-arms on, and then, uh, then I'll go ahead and make sure everything's tight. But I'll take, I'll bring you guys along. I'm super excited as to how this is turning out. It's awesome. So thanks for sticking with me, guys. Cool thing, cool news. Uh, today I got a couple boxes in the mail, uh, one of which has nothing to do with you guys, but the other one does. I got my CT Raceworks boxed lower A arms and they are rad. Alright guys, so I looked at this and looked at this and looked at this and it looks to me like there's really no easy way of doing this. So <laughs> that's going to be fun. However, I think it can be done with one person. It's just going to be a pain. Uh, come here and hold this real quick, please. Grab the, yeah, it's heavy. Holy smokes. I'm so glad you're here. Get a hammer, stick the other end of it in there. Use it kind of as a pry bar a little bit. Just a little, just a little. Enough to get this in. Here, let go. Hold that up, please. Just a little. Can you pry it apart? A little. There, there, move your hammer. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, knuckle put in where it's supposed to go. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I said knuckle, I meant to say ball joint. Slam down on my knee. Put our bolt through. And that's on. There we go. All right, guys, this is the uh, passenger side. I was trying to give you a little different shot. Uh, go ahead and lift this guy up into place. Push this boot down. Learn that on the last one. Boot's got to go down. Lift this guy up a little bit. All you gotta do is give that a little shake and you're good. Put your bolt in. Oh, we're not in far enough. There we go. You'll know when you're in far enough because you can see the slot. Um, the slotted part on the uh, the ball joint itself, and uh, the bolt goes right through there, so it holds it on. All right, A arms are installed. That is so rad. Next order of business: tighten our castle nut, and uh, these things. I had a I had a thirty millimeter, thirty two millimeter for the. Uh, the old axle nuts, <laughs> the Halo 30 ones are quite a bit bigger. So just a little information for any of you that are like, oh, I'm gonna upgrade to a Halo 30. Buy a bigger socket so that it's easier for you than it was for me. All right, there we go. Most castle nuts, uh, you tighten them up to the, you know, you, you tighten it to where you can get the cotter key through. Sometimes you can tighten it up, like on this side, I tightened it up just a little bit more so I could get the cotter key through. The other side's already done, and I tried to tighten it, and I could not get it to the next key, so I had to back it off just a touch to get the cotter key through. Um, and so those are on, we're good. I think the next step is to uh, tighten our shock bolts, tighten our um, lower ball joints, and then we can jack it up and uh, throw the wheels on. One's done. Get the other one tight real quick. Jack it up.
I can go ahead and throw the wheels back on. And what I'll do is I'll be able to, I'll be able to adjust the tie rods so that the tires are both completely straight with the car. So that's the next thing. Coming around to this side, you can see the CT Raceworks A-arms and how high clearance they are. You can also see the RCV axles, way beefier than normal. And if you look down here, you can see the chrome ollie ball joints. So, but man, these A-arms are sweet. There's the other side. Here is my ultra hook uh, with the rope guard. That's the rope guard. So that's pretty rad. Coming around to this side, I'm just gonna kind of get as best view as I can. Oh, hey look, there's a rag in there. Get the rag out. That is the billet differential from Halo Lockers. That is the passenger side. Come around and give you guys a close up of the driver's side. Here's the driver's side of the Halo Locker. This is your um, locking mechanism. There's a switch in my dash that I hit, and it'll lock the differential and unlock it via this. But full billet, Halo 30. Super excited, guys. And again, here's a picture of the car from the front. This thing looks wicked. The car is finally finished. It's been like two and a half or three months. And it's finally all put back together. Super excited with how it turned out. Um, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I can't wait to do a shakedown run. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.